So, should you buy a premium Springer or go for a budget version? And what about calibre? 0.22 or a heavy hitter like the 0.25? Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. This review started out as a budget versus premium brand Springer rifle review. But then I thought, why not throw in a comparison within a comparison? And check out a .22 versus .25 calibers. The guns I chose for this shootout, so to speak, were the Remington Sabre, which retails at less than £200 UK, including an incorporated silencer and a scope in the price. The other is the stalwart Viroc HW95, which also comes with the quality Viroc silencer included, but nothing else, and retails at more than twice the price of the Sabre at £425 UK. I've reviewed the Remington Sabre before, and the full review is here. For the purpose of this review, I've discarded the included 4x32 scope and mounts, and instead used the same Hawk 4x16x50 AO scope on both for fairness. So, let's do a walk around on both of these together as a direct comparison, shall we? They are both traditional style rifles with wooden ambidextrous stocks. And at first glance, they appear to be beech. The Sabus is a slightly darker colour, perhaps to make it look more walnut-like. The length is 11.45mm for the Viroc and 1155 for the Sabre. The barrels are slightly different lengths, with the Sabre appearing to be 320mm long. But, due to the fixed plastic silencer, it's pretty difficult to be exact on the length. The Viroc is a 300mm item and is threaded to be able to take a standard silencer. Which means, of course, you can use a different silencer or moderator or suppressor if you wish. A nice bit of flexibility, but I can't see a reason to change this excellent included item. And whilst we're talking about the silencers, don't forget the .25 calibre Viroc does need a calibre specific item or you'll simply blow holes through it. Both of these silencers do work, and pretty well, but it's always fighting the noise from the spring and internals on these types of guns, so you're unlikely to hear them whisper quiet. Still on the figure side, the Sabre weighs in at 3,472 grams, and the Viroc, well, that comes in at 3,212 grams. The main difference here is not the 260 grams difference, it is more around the balance of them. You see, the Viroc carries its weight more centrally than the Sabre, which is quite front heavy, as opposed to the Viroc keeping it nicely back into the body. Now, Mrs. AAR isn't a big woman, and I tried her with these. The Sabre became very uncomfortable to her very quickly. Apart from the fact she's had spinal surgery, the Viroc, on the other hand, was far more comfortable because it kept the weight more central for her. The breeches at first look very similar, but a closer inspection shows the difference in manufacturing. The Viroc has a twin cam lock system in the breech, whereas the Sabre works on a more simplified sprung ball bearing into a seating hole, which, who knows, may not have the same longevity as the Viroc. In use, it still feels pretty solid, though. Working down the top of the guns, they both share the same type of grooved 9 to 11 millimeter rail system. The stocks on both are really nicely made, and there are no sharp edges or poor craftsmanship evident on either of them. 
the Viroc does feel that little bit smoother, as if it's been sanded to within an inch of its life, and does have that extra air of quality feel about it. That doesn't mean that the Sabre is poor quality, far from it. In fact, the Sabre has a nice checkered stippling to the forestock, giving it the potential for better grip that the Viroc doesn't have. The one thing that is very noticeable in a side-by-side -side view is the trigger. In the Sabre, it is about 15 millimetres, or about half an inch, further forward than that of the Viroc, which will result in the pad of your finger being in a different place when it's on the trigger. In my case, I quite like the position of the Sabre, but then again, I have quite long fingers. And this is, of course, purely down to the positioning on the stock in relation to the grip. Both of these guns, while we're talking about triggers, have adjustable triggers. The Viroc has a rather bright gold-coloured trigger and adjuster, in comparison to the plain black version on the Sabre. Interestingly enough, they are both the same shape and have the same ribbed finish to them and the same placing of the adjuster, just behind the trigger. At this point, you can't help thinking the Sabre is basically trying to copy the Viroc, and lots of other little parts of this gun seem to confirm this. This is not a bad thing, because emulating has got to be the best form of flattery. Whilst both of the stocks are finished off with rubberized butts, neither have any form of adjustment to their stocks in the form of cheek pieces or butt pads. Another similarity is the safety, which automatically applies when cocking the gun. This is then disengaged by pushing the safety from left to right, which then reveals the red coloration when it's in fire position. One subtle difference to the Sabre is that it has what I affectionately call a flag system, which has a small arm that you can manually apply the safety at any time, and that's evidenced by the raised lever. It isn't quite as crisp as I would have liked, but it does work. So, what about the power? Well, this shouldn't really be an issue with either, as they are both sub 12 foot pound guns for the UK market. But as always, chrono out to check. Well, the Sabre was the 0 .22 calibre, firing 15.89 grain JSPs, and saw a maximum of 556 feet per second, which is 10.97 foot pounds or 14.79 joules. A little lower than I would have liked, but airing on the side of caution to keep you below the 12 foot pound limit. The Viroc then, well, this is the 0.25 calibre with 25.39 grain JSBs and saw initially 473 feet per second, which was 12.62 foot pounds or 17.11 joules. Oops. Now this isn't unusual for a new gun still holding oils in the barrels causing a little bit of dieseling, so I shot around 100 pellets through it and saw that drop. It got down to 460 feet per second, which is 11.93 foot-pounds or 16.18 joules, which is still quite hot for a sub-12 foot gun and will hopefully settle down a little more over time. So, why am I so bothered about the power when they are both sub-12 foot-pound guns? because I'm more interested in how much of that power they retain over distance to establish the stopping power of these two springers. Well, time to put more of my equipment at risk by setting my chronograph out at 40 metres and letting loose with these two. The .22 calibre saw between 7.4 and 7.6 foot-pounds at point of impact, which is between 10 and 10.4 joules. Now that equates to the retention of between 67 and 69% of the muzzle energy. Okay, over to the 0.25 Viroc then. 
At 40 metres, this held on to 9.85 foot-pounds or 13.36 joules, which is 82% of the muzzle energy. All this means that you're definitely going to have more hitting power from a 0.25 cal than a 0.22, even at the same power group. It is a much slower pellet and will naturally have a bigger arc to overcome with your scope, certainly at different distances. But if you can crack that, then you will do more damage, that's for sure. Which brings me nicely onto target work. Now I've made no bones about me not being a practiced springer shooter and 95% of my shooting time I opt for the lazy PCP approach. So any results I achieve should be easily beaten by an accomplished springer shooter. Now the filming of the target work is coming up but one thing I really wanted to say is Shooting the .25 cal is surprisingly a different experience. It does have more of a kick and it is slower and was harder to try and, well, I won't say master because I am by no means a master. Maybe become acceptable is what I should say. I did spend quite a bit of time and was eventually getting the hang of it. At about the same time, that my left arm was starting to look like Popeyes. So here goes, 2.2 caliber, sabre first, outdoor, December day, cold, 40 meters. Now let's take a look at that 0.25 cal Virac, shall we? Again, practice needed or more of a springer shooter really to show the best from these two guns. Conclusion. There are two takeaways from this review today. Firstly, the caliber argument just got wider. It's not just about 177 or 22 anymore. The 25 needs to be in the argument and has proven that it carries more power to take down potential quarry. But make sure you're capable of hitting it before you try. Of course, maybe the point two O will find its way into this discussion at some point too. Who knows? Secondly, should you spend twice as much money on a gun that is essentially the same design? The answer to that is, have you got the spare money, I suppose? Because is the Virarch better? Yes, it is. But is it worth twice as much? Well, this is the principle of diminishing returns, I suppose. You know, if you go out and buy, say, a Kia Sorento, will it work and do what an SUV is supposed to do? Yes, it will. And very well. I know. I've had them. If you spend twice as much on a Porsche Macan, will it be twice as good? Probably not. But it will have that feel and that edge that the Kia doesn't. And people buy both of them according to their budget and needs. And these guns are no different. Neither will disappoint and both are very capable. But the Virarch just has that little bit better feel and build quality and balance to it. But they'll both do a pretty good job with practice and familiarity. Not forgetting, of course, the Sabre is a full kit including that scope and mounts. I was quite interested in this one, having only shot 0.25 calibers in higher power PCPs in the past. Hopefully you've found some of this info new and interesting. If so, usual, thumbs up, share, subscribe, comment, click on the alarm bell, brush your teeth before you go to bed, and start your day with a smile to keep everybody guessing. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.